Welcome to Worship with Brightwood Christian Church. I'm so glad to have you with us today on this Sunday after Christmas, and I hope that yesterday was a blessing for you. And don't forget that Christmas is a season, so keep celebrating. Um, today you won't see my face, but you're going to hear my voice, and um, our sermon time will be a little bit less than conventional, um, but this is a, a good day to explore and to celebrate and do things a little bit differently. My children have been um, struggling with the fact that we didn't get a white Christmas. And so the images today that you'll see in the background of this are just uh, to give you a little bit of that um, today, whether whether it was white for you, wherever you are or not. And so I hope you enjoy those. And you can always um, find more worship at brightwoodchurch.org, as well as some information on um, how to grow your spiritual life and and your relationship with Jesus, and also um, some resources that you may find helpful if you're struggling. We're an itty bitty church, but we like to help direct you to more people who can do bigger things than maybe we can. And of course, God's the biggest, so uh, we hope that you'll take advantage of that and make sure that you enter into a life of prayer. Um, the other thing I would just encourage you about today is that you may not be real familiar with the hymns, but that's what Rewind's for. So <laughs> these are classics. They're um, ones that are fairly old in our in our Christian tradition and still get used a lot, but I think they're kind of great because they're just perky. So I hope you find that today as well and that today's a blessing for you. And we do have our Christmas Eve worship up as well if you're needing some, some nighttime worship, some quiet winter worship um, at a later date. It came out a little bit later because I had some computer security issues on Christmas Eve. That was fun. So um, we just hope that today is full of joy for you and and that you've welcomed the Savior in a special way and are finding ways to then go forward with him into the um, last few weeks or few days of the, of the year and um, planning for a wonderful journey in the next. God bless you and Happy New Year. Will you join me in the call to worship? I'm going to be saying the part that's a little bit lighter, and if you'll join me in the bold. Praise the Lord. Praise God in the heavens. Praise the Lord from the earth. Young and old alike, men and women together, praise the Lord. Let's sing together, Awake, Awake, and Greet the New Morn. That's number 138. If you have a cellist hymnal at home, those are red, and if you're a from a disciples church, you may have one lying around, but you certainly don't need it because you'll have words to the music in front of you. Awake, awake, and greet the new morn, for angels herald its dawning. Sing out your joy, for soon he is born. Behold the child of our longing. Come as a baby, weak and poor, to bring all hearts together. He opens wide the heavenly door, and lives now inside us forever. In deepest night his coming shall be, when all the world is despairing. As morning light, so quiet and free, so warm and gentle and caring. Then shall the silent join in song, the tired shall leap in wonder. The weak be raised above the strong, and weapons be broken asunder. Rejoice, rejoice, take heart in the night, through dark the winter and cheer this. The rising sun shall crown you with light, be strong and loving and fearless. Love be our song, and love our prayer, and love our endless story. May God fill every day we share, and bring us at last into glory. Will you enter into a spirit of prayer with me? O oh God, into a realm of clerics and kings, you sent your child to teach the wise, and show the world what power there is in love. Keep us vigilant to hear the voices of those who speak your truth. In the name of Jesus, we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's sing together. There's a song in the air, number 159. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the sky. There's a mother's deep prayer and a baby's low cry. And the star rains its fire while the angel choir sing. For the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king. And there's a tumult of joy when the wonderful birth for the virgin sweet boy is the Lord of the earth. See the star rains its fire while the angel choir sing for the manger of Bethlehem cradles a king. We rejoice in the light and we echo the song that comes down through the night from the heavenly throng. And we welcome the glorious gospel they bring, and we greet in the cradle our Savior, the King. Will you join me as we pray for God's people everywhere? Um, I'll be saying the words of God of love, and when you hear those, please join with me to say, draw us together in peace. Sisters and brothers in Jesus, God's word became flesh to birth love in our hearts and peace in our world. As we celebrate this gift of life in Christ, let us pray for the church and the world, saying, O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. Your messenger announces peace in shouts of breathless joy. Drive out the warring ways of our world and protect all who face danger this day as you guide our feet to travel with the one who is your peace. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. Your word comes with justice to rule the earth with fairness. Inspire the leaders of all nations and citizens of the world to order our economic lives to promote dignity and equality for all in your global household. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. Mountains and rivers clap and sing as your word makes all things new. Awaken us to the damage we do to your world and mend our ways that all creation might breathe again the liveliness of your blessing. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. When shepherds met your newborn Christ, they eagerly ran to tell the news. Make us joyful messengers of your good news who freely share your love in the world. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. In Jesus, your love takes on human form to seek us out and guide us home. May Christ be born in us today to lead us into the lives for which we were made. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. From your majesty on high to the loneliness of the stable, your word has power to sustain all things. And through him, we become your precious children. Comfort those who are hungry, sick, or suffering. And in all our afflictions, anoint us with the oil of gladness as you visit us with your salvation. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. Unto us a child is born this day to live and die and rise again. Bless all who are born today and all who will die, that your will for them may be fulfilled in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. O oh God of love, draw us together in peace. O oh God, receive our prayers through Christ, who is our glorious light. May we, like him, shine forth like the sun in bodies, breath, and beating hearts to sing your praise forevermore and as holy partners in a heavenly calling dwell with you eternally. Amen. Let's bring it down a notch before we go into communion and kind of settle in as we sing I Wonder As I Wander, number 161. I wander as I wander out under the sky, how Jesus the Savior did come for to die, for poor ordinary people like you and like I. I wonder as I Sky. When Mary 
all. With wise men and farmers and shepherds and all. But high from God's heaven a star lights did fall. And the promise of angels it did then recall. If Jesus had wanted for any we think a star in the sky or a bird on the wing or all of god's angels in heaven to sing he surely could have it cause he was the king as we approach the table of the Lord today, I'm thinking about the cookies we leave out for Santa and the way in which we take such care, especially when the kids are little, to, to make him feel at home. And thinking about how that translates to Jesus, because I never want to put Santa aside. I always want to make sure that we include Santa. I know some Christians aren't that way, but I think he provides such a wonderful counterpoint um, to how we think about Christ at this time of year. And and in this moment when um, we've just had our visits from Santa, but um, Jesus, for one thing, stays. Jesus stays. So just pop down the chimney and, and leave again. He stays. And he gives all of the gifts <laughs> um, that have ever been important. And when he does that, he doesn't ask for anything returning. Instead, he continues to feed us the things that we do in his name and, and for him aren't because he needs it for himself, but because he has partnered with us in ministry to call us to continue to love and feed his people, to do that work together. And so it's a, it's a whole different thing than um, the kind of tip we leave for Santa um, on Christmas Eve. This is, this is bigger and better, and and we're the ones that end up fed. And so this is that table and you are invited, whoever you are, whatever you have there at home, bread and cup, whatever that looks like for you today, um, know that it's the table of the Lord. It's, it's he who invites you and you're so very welcome and you are so very loved and he's so very glad to feed you this day with spirit and with truth. All who believe in Jesus are invited to his table. Praise God. As they were eating, Jesus took the bread, gave a prayer of thanksgiving for it, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup, gave a prayer of thanksgiving for it, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the new covenant poured out for you for the remission of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Truly, I tell you, said Jesus, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we are so grateful today to come to your table, to continue to be fed. Help our hearts to understand the difference between giving back because it's expected and giving back because it's a joy. We thank you for the chance to give and we thank you for the chance to receive and we ask that our hearts would be fully open to this gift today as we continue to receive you in our hearts the way the manger received you into its arms. These things we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Our scripture for today is Colossians 3, 12 through 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, 
just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Okay, so I'm going to be real honest with you today and tell you that as I am recording, my family is in the other room watching A Christmas Story, which is why maybe even in quiet and serene moments or moments of prayer, you've heard laughter in the other room. And it kind of works out, though, perfect, because one of my favorite scenes in, in that movie is when Ralphie receives uh, the gift of clothing, um, some of it just the really boring stuff that no kid ever wants to open for Christmas, like um, socks, you know? I mean, there's pretty cute socks these days, but back then it was just like socks. It wasn't very exciting. And uh, then he gets a present from his aunt, I guess, and it's this very pink bunny suit that does not suit him <laughs> at all he is miserable and is required to try it on anyway and uh i just i love that scene i think it's really funny and we even have a neighbor that has has ralphie in a bunny suit out as part of their christmas um lawn ornaments um so it's apparently become an important christmas tradition but i think clothes in general have become a really important christmas tradition um maybe in a new way in a way that's more uh, symbolic and ornamental than it used to be you know you used to ask for particular clothes for Christmas and sometimes that's because you needed it it may say a lot about our overall affluence that clothes have sort of become a kind of kitschy holiday thing I mean they've been around for a long time as part of the Christmas tradition we uh, we have stockings at the fireside I mean that's that's been around a while and they started out being real live stockings, not the cute furry things with, you know, engraved names on them. Um, there's a tradition, I think it might be Iceland, where they put their shoes out on the windowsill and some sort of small elf type things fill them. Um, so that's a interesting one. I haven't really ever tried that. I mostly wear flip flops in the house, so nothing would probably stick in those shoes anyway. Um, it's been very popular lately to, uh, to have ugly Christmas sweater contests. We've seen this. I'm a little concerned about this one because I'm always afraid that, you know, what I wear for the ugly Christmas sweater contest, you know, might be something that someone actually has at home and takes seriously. Um, now there are Christmas suits that are pretty spectacular that I, uh, I love to see and not sure I would ever buy, but, you know, kind of head to toe printed uh, men's suits with whatever holly jolly mess people find. I have a really dear friend who is um, Jewish and he found a great Hanukkah one this year, which I'm glad they're, you know, expanding into other holidays. So those are always interesting. And of course, um, I think especially maybe post pandemic, I know a lot of folks had begun to do more sort of homespun things. People took up crafts, people took up hobbies again in a new way. And, and so I hope a lot of people did get, you know, the um, hands knit um, gloves and hats and scarves and that, that those were appreciated in a way that, that maybe we haven't um, taken fully uh, for what they are before, which is a gift not only of someone's treasure, but of their time um, and of their art and um, of their mindfulness of us. So I was thinking about all those things as I thought about today's scripture. Um, it's one that, you know, we, I think we know this scripture pretty well. It, it, it's one of those that to me, 
I kind of find myself saying the words along with it as I as I hear someone read it. Um, if you don't know it well, uh, this is a great one to memorize or to memorize parts of um, because it's it's one of those scriptures that I think boils things down, uh, keeps things simple and um, and says a lot with a little, which sometimes the the letters in the New Testament don't do. They can they can have a bit of a run on, but this is pretty pretty consolidated of of the Christian life. And it's a great one for just after Christmas because um, I think after the manger and, and our celebration of welcoming the Christ child and all that anticipation and this great buildup and then it's Christmas. And I think some of us that day after are kind of like, ah, okay, what now? You know, there's a little bit of a letdown and, and spiritually there can be that same thing. Like what, what now? We've done the big celebration. We're really excited. Now Jesus is here and we're done. And that's not the case. Um, one of the scriptures that um, we typically hear on Christmas Eve, we certainly heard it in our own services, is John 1. And uh, a good portion of that gets read, I think, most Christmas Eves. And and one of the big emphasis points of, of that scripture uh, about uh, Jesus and, and his being the word and his being the light is also um, his transformation of us into children of God um, in, in a new way, into the, into the adopted, into the household of God, where we're part of um, God's family in a different way through Jesus Christ. And as part of that, we have things to do. We have a life to live that's different than it used to be. And sometimes that um, different life um, we see reflected in clothing. We think about um, nuns when they choose the life of, of the order, um, begin to wear different clothes. And we see that in a lot of spiritual orders. But uh, you probably have have seen that transformation in in different times in your life. You might um, you might have started to put together sort of a, a business wardrobe when you began um, your first job in an office, or maybe you know you really know that you're in a workplace for the first time and settling in there when you get your your uniform. Um, you maybe requires special clothing as you begin a journey in um, in a place that has more safety requirements. So uh, my brother-in-law is a chemist and there's just things he has to wear to stay safe. You know, you gotta have your goggles. And, and so those are things that kind of define a before and after moment for him as he um, began to do that work of science. Um, you know, the, the moment when doctors, I think, feel like doctors after their training and all the good work that they do is they have a, a white coat ceremony. Um, and, and that's so significant for them, so meaningful. Um, sometimes the, the nurse's first set of scrubs is, is that moment when, when it all feels real. And so this um, is kind of a, a shopping list of the things that that we need to make sure that we're wearing in in this new household that we inhabit um, now that Jesus is with us. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you all must, also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. So there's just so much. There's so much in the scripture. And I, I'd encourage you, it's it's this week where it still feels like Christmas. We have this Sunday just right after Christmas. And it kind of feels like far away to have a new year. But really, we won't gather again in worship until the year has changed over. And and if you're struggling to know kind of what to do to, 
to think about um, New Year's resolutions, I think that it wouldn't um, really get much better than choosing one of these things, especially to make sure you're wearing every day, um, to make sure that just like you check to make sure you have your watch before you leave the house or, you know, that you look in the mirror and, and make sure if you're like um, many people besides me that you wear your earrings or whatever it is that you just don't feel quite right without, um, that maybe you could choose to put that on um, more intentionally this year. Compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, love, forgiveness, peace, gratitude, wisdom. And, and I'd also encourage you to keep singing. It's strange that just as soon as Christmas is over, right? There's usually whole channels that are um, associated with Christmas music in that month before Christmas. And, and then Christmas happens and then it just all goes away. And um, we may be a little bit grateful for that because I'm sure that Christmas music started in the stores about three days before Halloween. But, but, um, there's not another time where the, um, the music that, that has at least tangentially something to do with Jesus is more notable and more, um, ubiquitous it's kind of everywhere than just before christmas and so um, it kind of becomes a habit whether we like it or not to be singing psalms hymns and spiritual songs to god even if we're not even recognizing that's what we're doing when we're singing christmas music don't stop um, don't stop in this part of um, this post christmas lag and the part of figuring out what to do next after this whole manger ordeal, don't stop singing. Think of it as another important accessory in your life, something that you can't just quite do without this new gift that you've been given for Christmas that, um, that you long to wear. I, I hope that the gifts that you received at Christmas were a joy to you, but I hope that the most important was Jesus Christ. And, and I hope that you take this week and, um, and the time that hopefully things are a little bit more quiet for you and, and maybe work um, schedules have shifted a little bit this week. You have some time with friends and family to, to think about those clothes, um, which you may be lacking, which you might need to place more emphasis on what you need to to put back on or pick up again and and to do all that with a song in your heart and on your lips will you pray with me holy god we thank you so much for the new clothes we received for christmas not just the ones that were in packages under the tree but god the ones that came from putting on this new identity and household of your children we ask that you would bless us as we endeavor to clothe ourselves um, so that we can look just like Jesus Christ in the heart and spirit. Keep us singing, God, and bless us as we go our way and as we approach the new year. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's sing Good Christian Friends Rejoice. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Listen now to what we say. News, news. Jesus Christ was born today. Ox and us before him bound. He is in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christ is born today. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you hear of endless bliss, joy, joy. Jesus Christ was born for this. He has opened heaven's door and we are blessed forevermore. Christ was born for this, Christ was born for this. 
And Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the grave. Peace, peace. Jesus Christ was born to save. Calls you on and calls you all to gain the everlasting hope. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. May the Christ inhabit you, the Father uphold you, and the Spirit sustain you now and forever. Amen.